This is the Troll Patrol. Live with Justin Freakin. Welcome to the Troll Patrol. Live. It's a freaking Tuesday. Hope everybody had a fantastic Labor Day without participating in any kind of labor. It wasn't a labor of love, something that you wanted to do. I I promised that I would broadcast if I found a movie. You and your fucking British spelling of labor. That's not how labor is spelled. Learn English, you English motherfucker. Yes, that was meant to be a joke. Yeah, learn American English, damn it. Because, like, we're American. We're the greatest country on earth. You learn to speak English our way. We need to, we need to wage war to impose it on the rest of the world. Specifically, the southern dialect, the dialect I speak. The media winch was mocking the other day. <laughs> Live in color. That's my favorite color. Ooh. Ooh. Or the Asian people. Or any anywhere that the U.S. decides to wage war, we get beaten by them. Does not matter where we decide to make some war. We fuck it up. Oh yeah, I, I need to talk about what we got going on on the show tonight, don't I? Well, I mean, South America has come back to haunt because that was a covert action. The the consequences of the U.S.'s actions in South America. I got a song for you. It's called. Suck my balls. Would you like me to sing it for you? The repercussions of what happened in South America is being felt now with the refugee crisis, the gang violence. Only wholesome things. I don't know about Unknown Henson being awful or awesome. Like, I've seen him live. He's a, he's a great performer. I will give him that. Now, I don't know that the person is all that awesome of a person. I think he might uh, he might be a little, little bit of a redneck and stuck in, uh, stuck in the past, perhaps. We only do wholesome things on this stream, like talk about the news. It might even require a content warning. I'm sure we'll do something throughout the show that requires that. We're going to talk about the governor's race in California. We're going to talk about the governor's race in Florida. Apparently Ron DeSantis had a run-in with a reporter today. Oh, remember that radio station? where I, I lit them up, tore them a new asshole, and said they should be taken off of the air, their license revoked for having the audacity to put Phil Valentine, the COVID-denying asshole, on their airwaves, on the public airwaves. And then he, he suffered the consequences of his actions and died of the covid they did a whole Labor Day special. A Phil Valentine Labor Day special. We're going to take a listen to part of that here towards the end of the show. The I didn't even know how to say it last week. The Moo variant. I said it wrong almost an entire show. The Moo variant. Get ready to hear about the Moo variant going forward because it has been detected in 49 fucking states. 
Ooh. Of course he was a dick. All, all these right wing assholes are. Rolling Stone has had to issue a addendum. Not necessarily a correction. All the all the uh, right wing outlets are jumping onto it like, oh, they're refusing to call it a correction. Well, they didn't really have to correct the story. They cited somebody. That person, their credentials were a little off. Rolling Stone made the correction, but of course, right wingers went nuts about it. Some doctors at UAB walked, uh, walked, oh, it was nurses. It was nurses at UAB walked off the job, staged a walkout for better conditions. Perfect thing to do on Labor Day. A virologist is upset that his work has been hijacked by anti-vaxxers. But first, let's talk about the law going into effect in Texas. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're going to start off with the bill signed into law in Texas. Oh, you thought we were going to do the abortion bill. Governor Greg Abbott signs SB1, the GOP voting bill, into law. Abbott signed the Republican-backed voting bill into law on Tuesday, making good on a promise to rewrite the state's election practices despite sharp opposition and quorum-busting walkouts by Democrats. Election integrity is now the law in the state of Texas, Abbott said shortly after putting his signature to Senate Bill 1 during a signing ceremony in Tyler. Abbott dismissed Democrats and civil rights leaders who say SB1 will increase hurdles to voting and disproportionately affect non-white voters. No one who is eligible to vote will be denied the opportunity to vote, the governor said in front of a backdrop of U.S. and Texas flags and a half a dozen Republican lawmakers. It does, however, make it harder for cheaters to cast an illegal ballot. That's what Abbott says. Now, what's wild about this is the Trump DOJ said the last election was the safest election in history, so it's weird to sign a bill about securing elections after the safest election in history. Immediately after Abbott signed SB1, two federal lawsuits were filed to block the law from taking effect on December 3rd, including one led by the League of United Latin American Citizens. L-U-L-A-C strongly opposes this attack on our voting rights and freedoms because they have one and only purpose to dilute our voice at the ballot box and continue to stop electoral change in Texas. This is according to Domingo Garcia, the president of the organization. The NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund also sued to halt SB1, arguing that Republicans ignored opportunities to make it easier to register to vote and to cast a ballot instead of placing restrictions on drive through voting. Instead, placing restrictions on drive through voting, voter uh, assistance, and mail in ballot applications. Two similar federal court challenges were filed Friday as the battlefield over SB1 shifts from Capitol to the federal courts. Friday's lawsuits by civil and voting rights groups joined by progressive organizations, argued that unless it is blocked, SB1 will suppress voting rights, allow partisan poll watchers to intimidate voters and poll workers, and create poorly defined new crimes and civil penalties. Abbott said he was confident the new law will be upheld in court. They even argued with somebody earlier today, and, like, they say the same thing. They all parrot the same line. They're like, what? You think black people are too stupid to get an ID? That's always... The, I didn't even mention anything about IDs. I mean, there's a lot wrong with this law besides ID. I think ID laws were already in place in Texas before this law. This is extra restrictions. But they just parrot the talking points they hear on right-wing propaganda sites. But no, no. I voted in the last election without a valid picture ID. <laughs> I work from home. My license expired. A pandemic happened. Why are you trying to limit my vote? Why is my voter registration not valid? 
Now, I live in a state where an ID is required. I took my expired ID. I took my birth certificate. But here's the thing, is the state where I'm from, an ID wasn't required. I went to the polling location. They asked me my name. They asked me my address and they asked me my date of birth. They find you in the voter rolls. They turn the book around. You sign your name. Now tell me, how is that any less secure? Name, address, and birth date. Think about what it re- what would be required for somebody to go to the polls, the information they would need to have in order to try to hijack an election. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's just a restriction. It's only going to apply to a small number of people. Now, the left has lost this argument in public polling. ID laws are popular just because most people have an ID. The the few people that don't have an ID tend to be poor people which, of course, is unfortunately in this racist-ass country uh, uh, falls on people of color. It is indeed security theater. You're exactly right. And like, I don't think you necessarily need an ID, but you have to approve your identity because when you're registering to vote, and this, this was, I'm from Kentucky, and it was any time that you had a interaction with the government was a chance to register to vote. So you may have an interaction with the government that doesn't require a photo ID, but you have to present them your, you know, your birth certificate, your social security card, what have you. They could lie and use someone. You would have to know somebody else's info. You'd have to know somebody's address and birth date. And you could only do it once. And you'd have to know their polling precinct. I mean, if you knew their address, it'd be easy to find their polling precinct. But it just, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's just another hurdle. That's, that's, that is what Republicans are good at doing, is putting up hurdles. I don't care. You personally know someone that did it is not evidence of fucking anything because I can't verify if you're lying or not. So fuck off. I don't care if you personally know someone that did it. This is an incredibly stupid argument. <laughs> yep. There you go. That would, that would, uh, that would cause the ballot to be rejected. Well, you're not going to convince me because it was a, it was a stupid fucking argument. Yeah, it was. It was trying to counter what I was saying. That's literally what an argument is. And that's what I'm here for. You want to argue with me? 917-830-4359. Call in. I would love, I would love to have an argument. I feel like I half at, no, it wasn't adding context. It was adding bullshit propaganda. I would love to, I, I feel like I kind of half-assed the show tonight with what I have prepared. So I would love nothing more than someone to call and argue with me for an hour or two. So if you would like to actually have a debate, a discussion, whatever, what have you, what whatever you want to call it, 917-830-4359, or you can hop in the Discord. And I will be happy, like, <laughs> pick a topic. I'll go to town on it. I mean, I even made a cup of coffee before I came on the air tonight. And for those of you who don't know, usually I'm sitting here drinking tea, but I drink pussy tea. Sparkles won't drink my tea when she comes over. Because it's like herbal, non-caffeine fucking shit. So like, coffee is the only time I ever get caffeine. So I might get wired during the show. And I'm not high enough for this shit. That's, that's for certain. Please, add all the context you would like. Give me this context. I'm dying for it. (laughs) 
other Texas laws, the abortion law. Remember we talked about the website and I, I kept promoting whatever the fuck it was called. I don't remember now. ProLifeWhistleblower.com. That was the name of it. We did our job, the Texas-based abortion tracking website that was designed to help enforce the state's recently enacted abortion ban has been shut down for a second time. ProLifeWhistleblower.com, which was created by the anti-abortion group Texas Right to Life, invited people to send in anonymous tips on those who may be performing or aiding in abortions in violation of the state's new law. Texas' abortion law essentially bans almost all abortions after a fetal heartbeat is detected, which is usually around six weeks of pregnancy. The legislation also allows private citizens to sue people who aid or perform abortions in violation of the law. The website was booted from GoDaddy on Friday for violating the company's terms of service policy on collecting information on third parties. Oh my god! So it was also like trying to collect your information and scam you as well. Site's registration was changed to Epic, which is notorious for hosting other controversial websites like 8chan, The Daily Beast. Oh, I'm sorry, The Daily Beast reported. The site later went offline after Epic told Texas Right to Life that it violated the company's terms of service. The fucking hosting site for 8chan has terms of services that can be violated shit. Representative for Epic told the Daily Beast that it had received complaints that the anonymous form violated the company's terms of service, particularly the collection of information on third parties without consent. What were they trying to... What kind of fucking scam were they running? Texas Right to Life spokesperson Kimberly Schwartz told the Washington Post that the organization is seeking long-term plans for the website. We're exploring various long-term plans for domain registration, Schwartz said. For now, ProLifeWhistleblower.com is redirecting to Texas Right to Life only while we move hosts. Before it was removed from GoDaddy, multiple TikTok and Reddit users had flooded the anonymous tip line with fake reports. I don't give a shit what you do, dude. You want to come in here and give a dumb fuck opinion, I'm going to call it out. That's that's what I do. I'll give you the chance to defend yourself. You can call in. You can discord. Feel free to give it a whirl. Mexico Supreme Court votes to decriminalize abortion. When you're like saying, oh, my friend did this. No, that's that's not evidence of anything. You can't present that as evidence. That is a dumb fuck thing to do. Because I want something that's concrete. You got to give me data. If you're trying to dispute what I say, you give me data. You give me something I can look up and prove. Because my friend did it, I, that's not provable. So it's, it's, it's not anything that's relevant to the conversation. I'm telling you you're full of shit. Voter fraud is minuscule. It doesn't fucking happen in this country. Most voter fraud is people voting in the wrong precinct by mistake or fucking up their ballot. (laughs) So I, I don't give a shit about you just fucking coming in here and, and, and saying something that's unverifiable. It, it adds nothing to the conversation. I just told you. Yes, it's, it does fucking happen. It is absolutely minuscule. And when it does happen, it's usually an honest mistake. Would you like me to go down through all the fucking challenges that the Trump administration 
threw up at ballots that turned out like, oh, they said people were voting in the wrong state, but it turned out to be military families that were stationed somewhere else but were voting in the state where they were registered. Would you, would you like to give me specific instances that I can show you that tangible evidence to prove something? Because just saying my friend did it isn't evidence of anything. It doesn't add anything to the conversation. It makes you look like a dumb fuck. Do you understand? That's, that's how discussions work. But yet you're implying it's so common that you have a friend that did it. The implication being that you have, that everybody like knows somebody that's done it. So it's far more widespread than what it actually is. What, what friend comment? You asked me what dumb fuck I, what else have you said? Have you said anything? Like that was that was the dumb fucky thing you said in my chat. <laughs> it does matter. It does matter if Texas passes that law. Because even if it's just preventing a thousand, two thousand, or any number of people, whether it's it's insignificant on the margins, it's enough to swing an election. Oh, it will matter for the Republicans because they can't win an actual Democratic election. They have to rig things. It absolutely matters for Republicans. And that's why they push so hard to pass the stupid-ass law. Why don't you do a stream? What am I parroting? What am I parroting? Do not accuse me of shit. You better come with receipts. Oh my God. You're a partisan. You're coming in here spouting right wing propaganda. I stick to facts. I'm, I'm not the partisan here. I'm not even a fucking Democrat. Now, I'll probably never vote anything but Democrat the rest of my life. But that's the Republicans' fault. They've done everything that they can to tell me that they hate me and my friends. They've done everything that they can to tell me that they hate organized labor. That's not a left-wing talking point. That's the facts. That's the facts. That's the facts. Right now, right now, the Senate is split 50-50. 40 million more people voted for the Democrats than did the Republicans. Over the last 10 years, four more people voted Democrat in the congressional races than Republicans. But the Republicans won more seats thanks to gerrymandering. Thanks to voter purges. I don't think you know what you're talking about. I'm not the partisan here. I'm just giving you data. It's not a left-wing talking point. If the left-wing is saying it, good! Because it's true! Like, first of all, the Democrats aren't fucking left-wing. I look at it as cheating. I look at it as rigging it in your favor. I want more democracy. I want more demo and you would be better off with more democracy. We would all be better off with a government that was far more representative of the people. Hell yeah, Merkin. Welcome. I hope you had a nice Labor Day. I took the evening off. 
I actually did look up a movie, if I had have streamed, that apparently had rave reviews. Let me let me see if I can find the name of it here real fast. I watch a lot of shit on YouTube. Let me scroll back. Something spirit. And it was supposed to be really good. I wish I had a streamed it. I'm sorry. I actually, I kind of uh, had it in my mind to stream. And then I was cleaning house and lost track of time. I'm too far back. I don't remember what it was. I'm sorry. I'm where I will look it up. Hold on. Oh yeah, you type in movie about labor, you actually get pregnancy movies. <laughs> God damn it, I'm sorry. I'm looking at uh, labor movies, Wikipedia. It was something spirit, it was made in the, in like the 60s. I thought about there is there was a couple of them that were you know from the twenties. I was like, oh, that'd be cool to watch something from the twenties. They were German. Not that I have anything against like German films. Yeah, yeah, fucking like Mexico decriminalizes abortion right after Texas criminalizes it. The ruling, which sets a precedent for the legalization of abortion nationwide, follows years of efforts by a growing women's movement in Mexico. Criminalizing abortion is unconstitutional. Mexico's Supreme Court ruled on Tuesday, setting a precedent that could lead to legalization of the procedure across this conservative Catholic country of about 130 million people. Unanimous ruling from the nation's top court follows years of efforts by a growing women's movement in Mexico that has repeatedly taken to the streets of major cities to demand greater rights and protections. The decision which opens the door for Mexico to become the most populous Latin American country to allow abortion was met with elation by feminist activists and dismay by conservative politicians. And of course, the powerful Catholic Church. Why anyone still listens to the Catholic Church, I'll never know. They do still hold some sway in Latin countries. Fucking Ted Cruz. Ugh. Speaking of viruses. <laughs> Transitioning from Ted Cruz. Authorities in India are racing to contain a deadly, I don't know if I'm going to say it right, Nipah virus outbreak. Authorities in India's southern Kerala state are racing to contain an outbreak of the Nipah virus, the virus which is not related to the coronavirus behind the current global pandemic and is far more deadly, killed a 12-year-old boy in Kerala over the weekend, prompting stepped-up efforts to trace his contacts. New infections have been confirmed. 
The boy was admitted to a hospital a week ago with high fever. As his condition worsened, the doctors suspected inflammation of his brain. Ooh! His blood samples were sent to the National Institute of Virology, where tests confirmed a Nipah infection. He died early on Sunday. Government authorities have stepped up contracting, uh, con- contract tracing efforts, identifying, quarantining, and testing people who may have come into contact with the young victim. According to the state's health minister, Vina George, 188 people who came into contact with the boy had been identified by Monday. Of them, 20 were considered high-risk primary contacts, primarily as family members, all of whom were being held under strict quarantine or hospitalized. The healthcare workers who came into contact with the victim were already showing symptoms. They were admitted to a hospital, and their blood samples have been sent for testing. Authorities sealed off the area within about a two-mile radius of the boy's home. They were screening people for symptoms in all adjoining districts of the Corella State. The neighboring state of Tamil Nadu was also on high alert for any suspect cases of fever. And, well, this is just something that we're going to have to live with going forward. With climate change, it's going to exacerbate these deadly diseases because one, we're going to thaw out some that we haven't even seen in thousands of years. And it also expands the places on earth where the conditions are ripe for a virus to develop like that. I hate saying overpopulation like, like, we're not overpopulated. The idea of overpopulation is kind of an argument to promote scarcity. It's, it's, it's somewhat propaganda. I think I saw the thing where like you could have every person on earth live on like an acre in Alaska or some shit. We have the resources to be able to, to, to feed more people, like, we can feed like 10 billion, 12 billion, something like that, and we only have 8 billion around there. It's just we manufacture the scarcity, and we, you know, we, we do things like throw potatoes in the in the ocean to make sure we keep the prices high and shit. It sucks. By the way, I'm, I've, I've got one of my... Destroy all monster shirt on that has a picture of Godzilla hopefully destroying Walmart. Uh, it, it, this shirt was by a buddy of mine who is uh, in the hospital right now and um, not doing too well. So I'll give him a plug. Hopefully he's alive to see the fucking results. Toxic tease on Facebook. Well, just any intermingling of populations is going to make a pandemic worse. I don't know. You'd have to ask somebody like producer Dave. They might make a trade with you. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., we are still dealing with the worst of the coronavirus outbreak. So far, 40 million coronavirus cases recorded in the United States. There have also been nearly 650,000 deaths related to the virus in the United States. More than 4.5 million deaths have been reported globally. Let's take a look at statistics from Labor Day last year versus Labor Day of this year. Daily COVID-19 infections up more than 300% from Labor Day of last year. You know, when we were actually taking precautions somewhat. Daily COVID infections are up more than 300% from Labor Day weekend of last year, the USA Today reported. Citing data from Johns Hopkins University. According to the data, COVID-19 cases have risen 316%. Since Labor Day of 2020 and daily COVID-19 related deaths 
are twice, twice as high. Hospitalizations are also up by 158% compared to Labor Day weekend a year ago. According to data from Health and Human Services, the massive number of hospitalizations is causing numerous states across the nation to run short on a number of ICU beds available to patients. According to the USA Today. Now, of course, we're seeing these staffing shortages, doctors, nurses, hospital staff. This is a culmination of a lot of factors. The lean staffing that hospitals have been doing for fucking decades now. Trying to operate them more as for profits. I worked for a hospital in the mid 2000s in the PR department. And literally that is, that is what I heard from the people at the hospitals. They tried to transition this hospital that had always ran as a not for profit into a for profit entity. That this will improve the services that we provide to people. Instead, it just helped drive up the fucking costs. I'm Amy Goodman. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's really weird to me when, like, I'll be, I'll be, like, laying here not paying attention and, like, YouTube will autoplay and it'll play something from fucking... Like, the other day, it played something from the Obama administration. They were referring to Obama as the president, and I'm like, fucking wow! That's a much different fucking time. It's so weird. Speaking of Labor Day COVID cases, this doctor in Nashville forecast further bursts of COVID cases following the Labor Day weekend. I'm glad I'm glad there's a video for this because I'm not high enough and I want to hit the bong. What I see is a tension that's going on, this great desire for people to get back to normal or near normal activities, which is, of course, understandable after a year and a half of hunkering down. But with a 42 percent vaccination rate in Tennessee, doctors are cautioning. But, 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 but like we really didn't hunker down. It was a good chance to hunker down and everybody just jack off and spend money on OnlyFans and shit. It absolutely does for me because I went back to college during those years. So like, it is a completely different era for me. But like, we never actually hunkered down for a year. Last year at this time, we were warning people not to go out on Labor Day and they didn't listen. Mass events, unvaccinated and unmasked. But at the same time, we see this invisible virus, highly contagious, still spreading in our communities, stressing hospitals, intensive care units, and increasingly even reaching down into the pediatric population and hospitalizing children. As family and friends gather for the holiday weekend and take in some entertainment, doctors are spelling out what the next two weeks could look like for Tennessee. Oh, wow, Mergen. I like, I feel sorry for all my friends that are in college through this because like part of the experience is going and being there in person. I mean, they're, they're, I took some online classes while I was there. It was already starting to be more hybrid back then, but like the community on the campus, especially. And like, you know, like one of the things that helped form my political opinions is like, you know, I was just around so many people from the fucking art department that were weird and had different views. Yeah, see, like, I've got a buddy who's going to college as well. And he, he goes almost entirely online. I think he has to, like, he has to take some classes eventually in person. I, okay, so I could understand, like, computer science classes and shit, but, like, I was in the philosophy department. I fucking loved going to classes. You know, in the broadcasting department, we had, you know... You know, my classes were in a lab, we, you know, with editing software in front of me. Like, I, I was at home, and I really enjoyed going to class. 
I sat with my coffee in the front row and all my government philosophy, all those kinds of classes, argued with people. Because of course I did. But like, like, it sucks for the people in college now to miss out on the on-campus experience but also still be charged for full fucking price. Still getting gouged, getting charged for that experience, which I mean, I don't think a lot of campuses are remote at this moment in time. Would you call me a chuddy troll? I mean, like, you might, you might have called me like a teacher's pet. Like, I'm like, ooh, 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 I know the answer. <laughs> like, when I'm, when I'm arguing with you, you know, I was arguing, like, somebody, like, put their hand up and said something stupid. And I'm like, oh, no, no, let me counter that. One time, one time, this dude came in, and uh, apparently he was blistered. The teacher got all over him because he was high as shit. And I just, like, the entire time, I'm sitting front fucking row, dead center, and I'm like, should I stand up and be like, I'm high as shit right now? Like, there's nothing, <laughs> no reason to say, like, I'm your best fucking student, and I'm high as shit right now. I smoked a bong before I came in. <laughs> but, like, clear, like, you know, I've been smoking for fucking ten years at this point and shit. I guess I know how to hide it a lot better. And plus, you know, I can talk, I, I can clearly talk while I'm stoned, whereas other people kind of, <laughs> oh, don't you love those classes where you can get ahead and then coast, especially because like some of your classes might get a lot harder towards the end. Well, for me, like, I'm I'm self-medicating. I'm ADHD as fuck, so smoking pot actually helps me concentrate. I... Pff, I wouldn't be able to do physics fucking problems. I can do... I can do my work. I can sit down and do, uh... Like, video editing and shit high as fuck, but, you know... I don't know if I can do some fucking physics... Pro I can't do physics problems at any time. In any state of mind. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you give me some fucking psilocybin mushrooms, I'll think I can do some physics problems. I'll do the physics problems, they won't be right. <laughs> Smoking pot helps me get over not being high too. Okay, okay, let's, let's finish this video and I'm gonna get a little more high. I actually expect two weeks down the road, here and there, we're going to have further bursts of COVID infection because of exposures that happened on this Labor Day. I don't even know about a fucking burst. We're just seeing the chart go straight fucking up. Hopefully we're plateauing now. But like, I kind of doubt it with Labor Day and college football going back in. Holy fuck. And as I mentioned in the teasers, the fucking Moo variant. Holy shit, I didn't realize, I didn't know the name of it last week. Like, when I first did this story, when I first did this story, they hadn't named it yet. Then the next day, it had the name, the Moo variant. New Moo COVID-19 variant now found in 49, 49 states. Holy shit, the St. Louis Dispatch is really fucked up. I can't see the story. Well, that's weird. Holy, I'm getting inundated by ads. Fuck you, St. Louis Dispatch. We'll move on to the next story then. Moo.
The South is on fire. Packed hospitals and packed football stadiums as COVID continues to surge. Health officials are hoping that Labor Day parties were held outdoors where the risk of transmitting COVID-19 is a bit lower. Lauren Tellerico in the Med Center tonight where cases are still surging. Lauren. Yes, they are. And between the, the kids, the kids are their hope to not shut down the economy. They're hoping to get us to herd immunity by giving it to all the kids. They think minimal kids will die. And they're just going to let it run wild. That's 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 exactly what it is. And that's how they're, they're hoping to get us to herd immunity. There are enough adults that take the vaccine and they just let it run wild through the kids. And they're hoping enough people don't get pissed off about it. School starting packed college. I. General Sherman would be incredibly happy to hear a headline like the South is on fire. Be like, God damn right it is. I did my job properly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant to make I meant to make that joke earlier when I actually put this put the story on there. I'm glad you brought it up, Tom. <laughs> he only burnt down Atlanta, though. We'll we'll get. I don't know if she's ever told that story on air. We can get Sparkles to tell how like she's upset that Sherman didn't go further. He just burnt down Atlanta. It wasn't enough. Football stadiums and people relaxing their COVID precautions. Health officials say we could be in for a long fall. Amid this COVID-19 Delta surge, we've got packed hospitals and packed stadiums. The South is on fire. Infectious disease expert, Dr. Peter Hotez. So well, they were quoting Hotez, so. We somehow have decided this is over. This past week, the CDC reports more than 153,000 daily cases in the U.S. Who decided this for us anyway? I didn't decide this. Hundred people tested positive for COVID-19 in Greater Houston yesterday. I, let me let me uh, let me clarify something as well. I, if you had told me last year, we're sitting here in August or no September now. That like okay, Biden is going to be the president a year from now, and you're going to be praising his foreign policy decisions, and you're going to be really upset at his handling of domestic issues. I would have thought it would have been the other way around. I really, honest to God, would have thought it would have been the opposite. That I'd be upset with Biden's foreign policy. But would be, you know, mildly impressed with his response to COVID. Instead, his response to COVID seems to be fucking nothing. I don't even, I don't even know. What is the government's re Okay, and if you watch Sagar and Jetty... Uh, what what breaking points is what their show call, is called now? Sagar keeps talking about this push for lockdowns. Who is pushing for lockdowns? I haven't seen a single fucking person with power talk about lockdowns again. <laughs> what? It doesn't look like that is going to be the policy. That nothing is going to lock down. That even with all these schools. Having to start and stop again with all these fucking restaurants failing because they're having to open up, operate short staffed, operate people. Because, I mean, even working them to death makes them more susceptible to get sick while a pandemic is going on. It's just exacerbating things. We fucking unemployment has ran out since the last time I was I was streaming. The eviction moratorium has, is gone. Millions of people are going to be out on the, the streets. There will be no fundamental change. But like I... It, it has... It is... It, he's handling it worse than the Republicans did. I mean, it was a Democratic Congress. That, you know, crafted the, the bills. <laughs> the COVID statues. Maybe, maybe that, maybe then we could take, get people to take it seriously.
At this rate, COVID is going to be around longer than the fucking Confederacy. Seriously. We might as well start building statues to it. More than 1,300 in a week. I think we're in for a long haul this fall, um, with school starting, with holidays. Dr. Catherine Trewisi, an infectious disease epidemiologist at UT Health School of Public Health, says one good thing about Labor Day is it's often celebrated outside. So that would mitigate any possibility of transmission. Not that it still can occur, but it certainly cuts down the probability. No, we are seeing transmission. The Delta variant is highly transmissible and it is absolutely not you should going through high concentrations of people that are outside um, you have to decide for yourself what risk you're willing to take consider do you have pre-existing conditions or live with someone who's unvaccinated like a child do you like living if so don't go out there if you if you can help it. Definitely don't go do any extracurricular things like go to a concert or go to a stadium. Now, once again, I've got tickets to a concert in like two weeks, three weeks. Don't hold me to that if I end up going. <laughs> Wear my N95 and put a surgical mask over it. State fairs are going on. School's starting back. This is just, it's a recipe for disaster. Because no matter how much we want COVID to go away, it's still very much here. We've decided the pandemic's over. We are simply going to live with a certain number of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. I, who decided that? Put any constraints on our daily lives. So there certainly are costs. I'm Lauren Tellerico, KHOU 11 News. I just like, my ass would have liked to have stayed home and jacked off. Not send everybody out to go get COVID. That's, I, that's just me. We could have taken that approach and it appears that approach works a hell of a lot better. Way less people die. Businesses are protected. People don't go homeless and shit. I'm fucking shit. Nurses at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, staged a walkout, I believe it was yesterday, saying they are extremely overwhelmed. A group of night shift nurses and hospital workers gathered outside UAB Hospital yesterday evening, briefly refusing to clock in for work in protest of long hours driven by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and what they say is unfair pay. Yeah, we're coming up against the capitalist system, bumming up against the public health needs. All right, so good evening, everyone. I'm Fred Davenport, WBTM 13 News. We're live outside of UAB Hospital here in downtown Birmingham. We're talking to some of the night shift workers who are rallying against their working conditions and also pay. They just, uh, they're out here and they want their voices heard. Uh, they've been working hard this year. Especially. Well, let them talk then, bitch. So we're going to talk to them to figure out what's going on and, and why they're rallying. They want their voices heard, but let me, let me keep yakking. We're just here fighting for equal compensation that we deserve while treating for our patients. Um, we just want equal pay, just like everyone else in the department gets. Um, nobody in and you should get it. You should get fucking hazard pay, not just equal pay. You should be getting extra pay. There are nurses in the ER right now caring for the patients. We're just the ones out here fighting for what we deserve. Talk about the conditions you all have put in a lot of work uh, uh, during the pandemic. Whoever wants to go next. Uh, yes, uh, we've a lot of us have worked through both COVID surges. You know, this is round two. It's you know been very overwhelming, just like the first one. We board 50 plus patients here in the ER while we're still expected to work at max capacity as well as being understaffed. So all we're trying to do is get equal comp- Not high enough for this shit. At the hospital because we are the front line. We see all the COVID patients first before they go upstairs. So we're just here to fight for our staff 
and get equal compensation just like everyone else. All right, so are you afraid when you leave that you don't know what, you, what you're carrying home? And some, are those some of the concerns that you, that you all have to worry about? Absolutely. They're putting their lives on the line. Or what their, you know, their COVID status is. So we are extremely exposed, especially these sick patients that come in here. Um, you know, yeah, that's a problem that's going on right now. Obviously taking the that, you know, the, the nurses, these these health organizations are having to hire and spend a lot of money to bring in, like, travel nurses and shit and are paying them exorbitant amounts. So nurses that were already there are getting the shaft because they're not, they're not seeing the increase in pay for, uh, like, like, consummate to the demand. Meanwhile, we did a story uh, last week, maybe. 70 year old, uh, 74 year old COVID patient. 74 year old man. Oh. COVID at Memorial. Shit. We, we've got a story on it. Well, basically, the judge. 74 year old man. Well, okay, you do it then. Herman has died. His family had sought a court order against the hospital over his treatment. Pete Lopez had been at Memorial Herman Sugarland for almost a month battling COVID 19. His family has been appealing with Memorial Herman and recently won a court order to have doctors treat Lopez with ivermectin. Memorial Herman still refused to administer the drug. Lopez was previously prescribed ivermectin by a VA medical center, but he was admitted to the hospital before he was able to take it. ABC 13 did reach out to Memorial Herman. They sent us a statement saying, quote, physicians diagnose and treat patients consistent with the best medical practices. It is the role of medical providers to determine safe and effective courses of treatment for patients. Lopez's family did not wish to say whether Lopez was vaccinated or not. 74. Well, he wasn't. That's what that means when they won't say it. All this fucking misinformation. Missouri restaurant gets around COVID-19 order. By reopening as a private club. And I'm sure we're going to have an update on Ray's Cafe here. When it has to shut down because it has an outbreak of COVID. A Missouri restaurant decided to reopen as a private club in order to avoid an order from health officials to close. Ray's Cafe in Blue Springs was told by Jackson County health officials to close its doors Friday after receiving reported violations of the county's COVID-19 order. On Saturday morning, a KSHB photographer took a picture of a sign on the restaurant door showing the business was now Ray's Private Club. A $1 membership fee collected at the door at each member's visit. Dress code is no masks allowed. By entering this club, you admit that you are not a member of the general public. By signing your name, you record your membership and attendance. Members are allowed to suggest items for the menu. Jackson County's August 4th health order said it applied to places of public accommodation, including any place or business offering or holding out to the general public goods, services, privileges, facilities, advantages, or accommodations for the peace, comfort, health, and safety for the general public. The order also said public accommodations shall not include a private club. Oh, there you go. That's how they got around it. Meanwhile, a... Parent is upset in Las Vegas because their kid might have had their mask taped to their face. The mom of a local nine-year-old boy is demanding his substitute teacher be fired after she says that a teacher taped a face mask to her son's face. <laughs> I almost saved this for the freak show. I really did. I'm like, this is this is something I can make fun of here when he did not wear it properly in the classroom. She spoke to us under the condition that we not use her name or show her face, worried her son could be further traumatized at school, but wanting other parents to know what is happening in one fourth grade classroom. 
I, I was furious, furious. I was, I was scared for my son on what kind of like long-term effect it's going to have on him socially. Uh, the fact that the entire class was laughing. This mom of a fourth grade student at Reedham Elementary in. Now, 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 I'm, I probably shouldn't tape a mask to a kid's head. Just so, like, we don't know all the details, but just 99% of the time, I'm going to say, like, you shouldn't tape it to it. Like, it's a little different, like, if it, like, taped to the side of his head or something. I don't, I don't know exactly what happened. Also, like, did it even really happen? Is she making this up? Is she full of the propaganda? We don't know for sure. Mountain's Edge says his substitute teacher stepped way over the line when the nine-year-old failed to properly wear his mask in class. He went to get a sip. Now if you duct tape it, like we've seen the people being duct taped to the seats and flights, which apparently the, the airlines have gotten real upset about that. Told people don't duct tape people to seats on flights. Now, like, if you're duct taping a mask to a kid's head, that's probably way over the line. Just, just trying to just trying to be fair here. Don't want to be partisan. Of water, forgot to put the mask on. Teacher then did not tell him to put it back on or send him to the office. She instead pulled him up in the front of the classroom in front of all of the students, and she then taped the mask across the top of his face. The mom says the sub added a second layer of tape from his nose to his forehead, and with tape still on his face, he went to the office to pick up homework he'd forgotten at home, and his dad dropped off. When he went to the office to- so he's just a shitty kid all the way around, eh? The administrators noticed the tape on his face. Alarmed, that administrator took the tape off of the child and alerted the principal who went to the classroom to investigate filling out this report and she saw another student okay so it did actually happen like another administrator saw on it on their face as well this mom later asked her son had other students also had their masks taped to their face he said yes it's been happening in his classroom since the beginning of the school year he says that he remembers up to five this mom says it is not a political issue she has no problem with the mask mandate, but says nine-year-olds like her son are often forgetful and should never be punished, purposefully embarrassed in this way. He was very upset. I can agree with that. He was humiliated. Fox 5 questioned the school district about this incident. They responded, quote, the district is aware of the isolated incident and is dealing with the employee through the proper channels. The principal proactively notified the family of the investigation. But that's not good enough for this mom. I don't think this woman has any business teaching children, for one. Number two, I think parents need to know what's going on in the classrooms. It's, an, it's I crazy. don't know if I would go that far, but she should, should be definitely happy. be reprimanded. And the mom also filed a police report about the teacher putting her hands on the student. She's also now looking at changing schools or possibly moving to a charter school. Oh, she's not political, though. A charter school. Ugh. All right, so remember the right-wing asshole who died of COVID after being anti-vaccination? Phil Valentine out of Nashville. Super Talk 99.7. WTN did a Labor Day special. First of all, you had this motherfucker on the public airwaves spouting complete fucking nonsense and it got him killed. It got him killed. His bullshit got him killed. I can't believe I can't believe you still allow the right wing blowhards you have all over your airways to continue to spew their their fucking bile and bullshit. But you have the audacity to do a Labor Day special of this asshole who died eating his words almost literally. Let's hear what a Phil Valentine, or at least the first few minutes of a Phil Valentine Labor Day special sounds like. This is the motherfucker 
anti-vaccination died of COVID. Information fueled, opinion driven. This is the Phil Valentine Show. On- I wonder. I wonder how much information we're actually going to get from this son of a bitch. Ah, oh, god damn it! Licensed music on the real radio. I miss that shit. It's Dan Mandis on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. For the next several hours on this Labor Day weekend, we are going to be taking a look back at some of the best moments that Phil Valentine had on the air here at WTN. And I wanted to play as much. He didn't have. He didn't have best moments. He had bullshit moments. Of weeks ago, but we were so honored to have so many of your terrific phone calls that I decided to put this retrospective together. And with so many great moments, it's easy to... I seriously don't understand how you can lionize a dude for literally doing something that got him killed. His propaganda got him killed. So you celebrate his fucking idiocy by putting his propaganda on in a special on Labor Day. On fucking Labor Day. ...to see why Phil Valentine is such a fan favorite. He was able to talk to anybody, people on the left, people on the right, the middle, and he was always respectful, even when he didn't get that same respect in return. Like that time that none other than Rob Reiner called in during the 2000 election. We've actually got Rob Reiner this time. Oh, good. Oh, this is interesting. Rob, how are you doing? Nice to talk to you, Phil. So you're here to support Gore, are you? I am, and this is such a critical election, and it is so tight that even though there's only a, a couple hours before the... Cl- talking about cheating. Talking about cheating. That, that's an example of the right cheating. Al Gore won that fucking election. There was a Brooks Brothers riot in Florida that stopped the recount, and the court had to step in, and the Supreme Court upheld... The stopping of the recount. If the if the count had gone on, Gore would have been president. It's an example of right wing cheating. Polls close. I am urging voters to get out there and vote for Al Gore. Well, let me ask you. You're in that one percent uh, that Al Gore keeps talking about as the evil rich. One percent. And the reason I'm asking people to vote for Al Gore is because. That 1%, I don't want it, and I don't need that extra tax cut that George Bush is offering. Well, why don't you send your money into the government, then? It doesn't benefit me, because the go- it's not sending... That's what he's asking for. The thing that drives me crazy. The government is the people. Right, well, then... The it, government can... There's a thing called the Social Security system that has benefited people for 65 years. Right. There's another system called Medicare that has benefited people for almost 40 years that we want to keep intact, not to mention the fact that we have an opportunity to... Meathead's right. Here ...and fix public education. What the... Doc, I had fucking... Well, fucking Meathead was on MSNBC the other day, and I'm like, oh, that's Meathead. We got fucking Meathead on Phil Valentine's show. But social security, but social security is can do. Individuals <laughs> cannot fix the education system. No, well, sure they can. Wait a minute. Let me finish here. I'm sick and tired of hearing people tell me that it's not the government. It's your local government that's using that. That's that. that the that's money right. Being used. That's right. The and local government controls the schools. The federal government. No, 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 no. The local government should be controlling the schools, not the federal government. Yes, the local government will control the schools, but the local government gets money from the federal government. Nah, but uh, like about uh, what? Between five and ten percent. Oh yes, it's about seven percent. Right. But no, 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 no. We we should. T- Totally abolish the way that we fund schools, which is by local communities, so that rich assholes like Phil Valentine, their kids go to nice schools because it's funded by their property taxes in their county. We need to decouple it from the area where people live and fund all schools equally instead of this, this fucking entrenched bullshit. Go to leveraging bonds to to to. to also, like I'm out of actual pot, so I'm gonna have to walk over here. I mean, I've got pot. I've got like I'm out of it here. I've got to walk over there. Leverage from the federal government. Oh, I don't have to walk over there. It's down here. Al Gore is not uh, 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 mandating local, uh, you know, federal government control. By the way, and this is important for your your listeners to understand, and I'm sick of hearing this. George Bush is the one that's mandating a federal program. How so? What do you think the voucher program is? That is a federally mandated no, 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 program. No, no, no. It, is fu- it is funneling taxpayer money to private interests 
with less oversight. That's that's what the voucher program was. Program, my friend. That, Continue to talk over me. I'm going to keep yelling as loud as I can. Well, you, I'm, I'm trying to have a co- Rob. I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Out there who are voting against their own self interests. All right. Well, let me let me ask you. Helping themselves. All right. Well, let me ask you about you know the, a lot of people in Hollywood who are well, all keep for interrupting me. That's fine because I'll, I'll I can. Talk well, let me. Well, can I ask you a question for crying out loud? No, let me answer. The- okay, Rob Reiner is totally not coming off well here, and I like as a media personality, and I learned this very early on in the in the, in the streaming world. Is like one of the one of the very first times I started dipping my toe into the streaming. I went on with some right wingers. And, like, I wasn't high. I, I hadn't eaten yet. I let them goat me into, like, I got really pissed. And, I, you know, I tend to yell anyway. You know, like, I was super fucking pissed off. I wasn't yelling in my, like, jovial way. And it didn't come across well. Fucking, when, you, when you're on somebody else's turf, especially. You know, it's one thing for me to be able to yell at somebody when I'm controlling the microphone. You go on somebody else's turf. You got to keep your cool. You got to be joking. You can't let them break you. Fucking Phil, Phil is completely wrong in everything he's saying, but he's coming across better. The question. All right. Uh, it, a lot of people in Hollywood uh, that make a lot of money are all for people paying uh, their fair share of taxes. Why, does it, why don't the people in Hollywood get together and have a big benefit for the government and give half their income to the government? We have. We are the most generous group of people on the planet. You're not giving. You, you've, got, you've got tax. I don't know if I'd say that. I talk to you. I'm asking people to vote for Al Gore because it's in their self-interest. Well, I mean, but no, but you, and I'll talk to you later because every time I start to answer a question, you interrupt me. So I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang up now and urge. To- He's pulling a Sydney Powell. He's just walking the fuck out. Self-interest. Thank All right. you very much. Uh, thanks, Meathead. Appreciate it very much. I mean, I was just. <laughs> he called the Meathead. He kept yelling at you. He monopolizes the conversation. Then they let me in on my own doggone show. No See, wonder they call him Meathead. Well, it's because he's the director. <laughs> so he has to do that. He has to shout at actors all the time. I guess so. Yes, that phone call is, of course, legendary in the career of one Phil Valentine. He was always able to speak to just about anyone. And one it of didn't the- seem like he was able to speak to anyone there. Donald Trump Jr. An epic- oh, my God, we got Donald Trump Jr. Donald Trump Jr. Don, how are you? I'm doing well, Phil. Thank you. Finally good to see you in the flesh. What? Oh, I'm definitely not high enough for this shit. The, the, the latest thing is the immigration deal, and, mm-hmm. and people say, well, what's the humane way to get uh, all these illegals out of the country? And I just wanted to you know, bend your ear so you could pass it on to Dad. He said humane and then called them illegals, which is a dehumanizing term. To make them, to otherize them, to make it okay to brutalize them. Fucking, you are a slimy piece of shit, Phil Valentine. We've talked about demagnetize America for years on this show, and that is cutting off the magnets that brought them. You've got uh, jobs and benefits that bring them here, Mm -hmm. and if you cut them off, they will naturally go where the jobs are. I use the, the. Oh my God! You've got industries preying on illegal immigration. It's almost like business profits from our immigration system. Because they're able to exploit cheap labor and also keep... It's almost like business runs the fucking government and is doing what they want. Dumb piece of shit. Oh, I fucked him up. He didn't like that I called him a dumb piece of shit. Now he ain't gonna play. Example for me, oh, there we go. I, you know, I lost a gig in Nashville several years ago, many years ago, about 20, and couldn't find anything in Nashville, so I moved to Philadelphia, got a better job. I mean, I think that's the humane thing to do. If we stop attracting the illegal aliens, they will go home. All right, listen, I think I think there's an element of you know truth to that, certainly. I think you know it's a big part of the sort of major four-step, at least four-step rollout of my father in terms of having an e-verify system, having these things, letting ICE do their job, mm-hmm. uh, you know, controlling our borders for a change. But, I mean, so much of what's there... Oh, you want to you wanna clamp them. down they're and... Just, just, they're just choosing not to enforce it, which is, right. you know, ridiculous. And, you know, ultimately, I'm not necessarily the person getting hurt by those. It's, you know, our African-American youth with all-time record, you know, high unemployment in the inner cities. It's other Latinos that are getting, you know, undercut for these wages by people that pay, aren't paying in. I mean... This is what makes sense, not just for Americans, but also for, you know, Hispanic Americans. For Now, what what time period did this take, like, did he have Don Jr. on while Trump was president? Because one of the things that they touted was the record low black unemployment.
I don't want to know about that side pussy. That was weird. That was a whole fucking conversation that I didn't like that happened. For African Americans, for all Americans, uh, you know, just to implement the laws that we have on our books. Yeah, and, and that's a top down deal. I mean, the president can right. do that and say, hey, we're going. Because this president, Obama, has chosen. Okay, so he, he like, 100%, which is in the run up to 2016. Have, you don't. Know, chosen to support my father. I think it's the first time they've ever endorsed a candidate mm -hmm. uh, because they recognize, you know, what's happened. I mean, they've, their power has been taken away. They've been told not to enforce things, and uh, people just, they, they touch them and go, and that's it. It's crazy. Well, yeah, I've heard people say, well, you know, Donald Trump's gone wobbly on this immigration thing. And, He's never and, gone wobbly. Well, I'm just, so, I'm, I'm know, listening the other day, he was saying, they got to go home. They got to go yeah, back where they he, came he, from. He couldn't have been more clear, and I was there, because that was, you know, what happened, you know. On, you know when we saying were, this at a time when immigration was like right, net fucking zero. Right, so I'm sitting in the room, and what my father did was, he, he surveyed the crowd. You had thousands of people in the room. He was basically and he realized they were racist as fuck, and he started playing to it. You're exactly right, Don Jr. Right. right, they play. Trump was, well, I was like, what? What do you mean? Where, where was the waffling? I, I didn't see it. So, no, he, his stance hasn't changed. It's been the same now. That does All right, that's enough of Phil Valentine. I just wanted to... God, I wanted to tear into that motherfucker. I can't believe that station still airing a, airing a tribute to him. After his own propaganda got him killed. What a dumb fuck. Should have never been on the air to begin with. So Ron DeSantis got into it with a reporter, I think it was today. He was talking about something about defund the police. But he got asked a question about a reporter because he's taking a hit on the COVID issue in Florida. That's not what I said. No, 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 that's not what I said. Uh, and not that I ever expect to be quoted properly. What I said was, if you're going to force vaccine mandates on people, just understand that what the data is showing us about the vaccine. The, va the data is showing us you're much less likely to be hospitalized or die if you're vaccinated. That is true. Yes. And I think you see it in the statistics. Yes. However, the vaccinations have not created herd immunity. And so if the idea is that having... Uh, Enough people have to take it. Enough people have to take it. You can't actively work against getting people vaccinated and, and help propagandize them and then be like, well, pfft, we didn't reach herd immunity. I don't know how that happened. Uh, herd immunity, you force everyone to do this and that will create herd immunity. That has not happened. Um, it's still spreading. People who, I mean, obviously in Florida, we're going down now, which is great, but um, but that's not what the, the issue is, is, is it creating the herd immunity? Fauci also said if 50% were vaccinated, you would not see any surges anymore. Well, that isn't true. Look at, I mean, obviously the Sun Belt, look at the Pacific Northwest, look at Hawaii. Uh, huge surges that you've seen and so but just under we have a new variant and the, and the messaging from the cdc has been horrible proof of this uh, to eat at a restaurant or to do basic tasks go to the grocery store there's some places around if you look at some of these places that have really gone off the deep end to say to go to the grocery store you should have to do that so we're not doing that in florida but the theory behind it is that if you make it so make everyone have to do this under penalty of law that somehow you wouldn't have spread and i think we just have to be honest about uh what it, what it's no the theory behind it is i don't want to have to go to the grocery store with unvaccinated people who could spread it a hell of a lot more easy doing and what it's not doing we had hoped that if you had 50 percent then you wouldn't have that. We had hoped you could build herd Where did he get this 50% from? Just hasn't, that hasn't happened. It didn't We've always known like herd immunity was like somewhere between like 73 and 78%. There's not positive impacts, but the positive- At least, we don't know for sure. The, the, the vaccinated individual's uh, chance of being severely ill. Also, I would say, um, if you look at what we've done, we've, we're leading the nation in pushing early treatment for people with COVID. And that's people that, that, that are not vaccinated, but it's also people that are vaccinated who are- yeah, He's been on, on the monoclonal antibodies. So I'm probably fucking up the name that, of that. Uh, this has been available since December. We found that most of the people that were going, being admitted to hospitals, um, yes, most were not vaccinated, sure, but almost none of them 
got the monoclonal treatment, the antibody treatment, early on in their illness. And if they had done that, a lot of those people would not have done. So we've done, we've done stuff. We've done the one here in Polk County. It's seen 2,800 patients as administered treatments. And what you're finding is we're seeing the hospital census decline rapidly. We're seeing the emergency room visits uh, for COVID-like illness decline. We're seeing the daily hospital admissions decline. So those are very, very good trends, but that's about... Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Well, I don't I don't know, like, are you behind or... Or is the chat just behind and you guys are watching the current chat? So we're going to have, by the, the end of this week, we'll be up to 25 sites throughout the state of Florida, all of them being able to do up to 320 infusions a day. Now, most of our sites don't have that much demand, but I would say the one here in, in Polk is probably doing between 150 and 200 every day. Uh, some of the other ones, like Bonita Springs, they do 300 a day pretty consistently, and then others do around 100. But the point is, is that by doing that, you know, getting it early, we're keeping- Who is this chick? She is like- and that's obviously better for, for their... She's got some googly eyes towards DeSantis. It's, ...gets admitted to the hospital, recovers, uh, and it's also helping relieving a burden. I don't know what's going on here. Also, I'm glad they're all, like, associating with each other. We know that cops are dropping like flies because a lot of them are refusing to get vaccinated. I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead since everybody's so far behind. Might even go back to the like the open screen and shit and let it let it sit there so I don't cut you guys off. But I am I'm gonna raid Media Winch. I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna give you an animal video first because you know that's gotta happen. Here's some bears in a fucking hot tub. I think this isn't even the the. This is the first time I played a bears in a hot tub video. It's kind of common among Gatlinburg where a lot, there's a lot of outdoor hot tubs. There's a lot of bears. These are some cute bear cubs. Taking a little dip. They're fucking adorable. I assume they don't have the hot tub going so it's like it's cool water and the bears are just like cooling off. I'm I'm totally here for some from for some bear cubs pulling off in a hot tub. Fucking meathead. Oh shit, I can't dump you in Media Winch. It's not Monday night, it's Tuesday. I'm off a night. That's right, I'm sorry. Yes, damn it. Up the internet in the U.S. It is a shame. I'll check my settings. All right, if you're watching on Twitch, I'm going to send you over to Polly People, who is looking quite lovely tonight. Go ahead, lie one up, tip one back. It's all right to have a little fun before you hit the sack. I am Justin Freegan. We will see you tomorrow night on the Troll Patrol. Live.